and you're listening to the Business Bootcamp Podcast, episode 135. Today, we're doing something special, something we've never done before. I'm going to be calling someone live and actually recording it. I call people all the time, but uh, today, what we did, if you listen to the last couple episodes, I was giving away free calls, um, and so essentially what it was, the first 10 people that signed up were able to get a free call, and then 10 random people uh, that signed up got a call. So I've been calling people most day to day, and I'm going to record one of them now. Hopefully, Catherine picks up. Catherine was one of our random 10 people who got chosen to be called today. So let's see what what, what her question is, if she has a question. Hopefully she figured that out, and uh, we'll go from there. So we got this recording, and let's go for it. All right, Catherine, answer the phone. Let's see here. Let's uh, call her. Yeah, call. Better pick up Catherine. Oh, speakerphone. You guys can hear. Hello. Catherine, and this is Mike with a uh, with a business bootcamp podcast. How are you doing? You. I'm doing fantastic. You're a hard person to get a hold of. <laughs> I know, I know. It's the holidays. It's a difficult time. But I, I but know, I'm right? Now, so I'm very happy. <laughs> you shopping right now or something? What Are you? That? Were you working today or are you shopping for Christmas? No, I was working today. I, I was working um, just for half a day, but I have family in from Canada and cool. it's just been crazy. So I'm glad you've, I'm really happy you called back. It's been a busy week as I'm sure it is for you too. Very, oh yeah, oh yeah. Do you, so do you live in LA? You said that in LA time. So is that is that where you live? Yes, I live in Los Angeles, well, Long Beach, which is a, you know a yep. suburb of Los Angeles. Very but cool. I work in LA a lot, so. Very cool. So do you have a question, or what do you want to talk about for the next few minutes? Okay, so I started this business last year called Tinsel and Bow, and I've um, kind of done everything on my own. I had a, I figured out how to build my own website and how to. You know, I'm doing everything on my own, working with a small business development center and got my license and I'm doing all that. And I started listening to you earlier this year and love, love your podcast, big fan. So I am doing a gift wrapping business primarily, but that's very seasonal. So I want to do something that's going to um, go beyond Christmas. So I was thinking of doing corporate gifts, which I have done for a few clients. I help them get them out. Um, so my focus would be with small business owners. Mm -hmm. I, you know, listen a lot to, you know, your advice on, um, being on social media and connecting with people there. So I started an Instagram account and a Facebook group or or Facebook page and all that stuff. And because my business right now is, is primarily local, I guess my question is, how do I, I, I want to grow, Yep. I guess my followers on Instagram and Facebook because it, it, so far all my clients have been people I know, mm-hmm. um, people that I've worked with in other capacities. I work as a professional organizer, so okay. they're people that when I tell them this is what I'm doing, they already know me, they trust my work, so they give me a shot and they love it and they're happy with my work. So I need to get new customers and mm-hmm. I don't know if social media is the way to do it or what's the best way to grow my business, I guess. Okay, cool. So let's dig in this a little bit deeper. Um, I am going to actually pull this up. What what's the what's your website what, web address? Uh, tinselandbow.com. dot com. Tinsel and bow. How long have you um done it now? I uh, have. How long have you? Well, had I opened it last year. Mm-hmm. Um, but this is the first year that I've really kind of gotten into it and just you know really pushed for it. Cool. Okay. All right. So I'm just on your site now. So, so just to be clear, you, right now you do professional organizing, and then this is kind of like your side hustle that you're trying to grow. Is that correct, or are you doing this full time? Exactly. Got it. I, I, you know, I do professional organizing. I do that pays my bills. That's what's funding my business. But I'd like to. I mean, I do love doing it, so I don't mm-hmm. mind, you know, doing both. But mm-hmm. I want this to become my primary source of income, and that's where my passion is, like gifts and wrapping and. You know, just working with small businesses and helping them do this stuff. But I found that there's such a value 
when they start thinking of the logistics, oh, I can't ship a cake across the country, or I'm not allowed to ship wine, like, I, that's my expertise. No, you can't, or unless you have a special license or all this stuff, and mm-hmm. I want to make this my full-time business. Okay, okay. So right now, I'm just looking at your services. I'm guessing, I'm assuming, based upon what you said, gift wrapping is kind of what you do most of. Is that correct? Um... Or like, because I, yeah. I see you got pick up and delivery, mobile wrapping services, corporate gifts, gift list shopping, handcrafted event decor. So like, what's kind of like the bulk driver as far as revenue? I would say like gift wrapping and packaging because okay. yes, it, it, yeah. So, so say a lot of a lot of people already have their gifts and so they need them packaged and shipped and or wrapped and yeah. Mm-hmm. So that's that, that's correct. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So like. I'm just thinking because like the, the the problem obviously is is scaling it outside of Long Beach and where you're at right like that area because even with the pickup and delivery thing obviously there's constraints demographically right um what right. like what like what, what like what hits me right off the bat is like I'm just scrolling I'm just trying to get a quick feel of some stuff here um let's see here So essentially, like if I was a potential customer, I would call you and say, hey, I live down the street from you. I have this gift. I'm horrible at gift wrapping, which, by the way, is very true. Um, uh, and, and, can you, and can you wrap it sort of thing? Is that sort of what your uh, majority of your customers are doing right now? Or is it mo- like corporate gift people? Like, for instance, I would come and say, hey, I want to get all 10 of my employees this gift. Can you wrap it and look at, make them all look nice? Is that kind of like... It's more the second one. Gotcha. Which is, which is what I want my focus to be because then it's higher volume and, and you know, sure. I, the gift wrapping, it, it's not going to make oh, tons of money. But if mm-hmm. I have corporate clients and I'm doing, you know, either for for your clients, let's say, you know, your landscaping business and you want to thank your clients and send them a gift or gotcha. something. Gotcha. I want to be the person that someone like you would go to. So, hey, I, this is my budget. I want to spend, you know, $40 per client what can we do? What can I, you know, send them? Mm-hmm. Okay. So like this is, this is what hits me off. Like I'm just going off the top of my head I had and stuff. So, but like this is what hits me as far as when I think about this, as far as scaling it, I would see if there's a way that you can somehow intercept a package between Amazon and the end consumer. So what I'm thinking is like, okay, I am like, okay, I'm going to get my 10 or 15 employees, some gift, I order it on Amazon. I haven't sent to your address, so like you would actually kind of become almost like a, a like a center to get the, the the actual gifts. They'd send them to you, um, and then so I as the employer don't even have to think about it. I just go on there, buy it. It's sent to you. You then wrap it and then send it to or deliver it to my my employees. Right. Um, obviously, you'd have to send it if you're going to scale across the country. Um, but the problem with that. Is Amazon has a gift wrapping kind of service already? Do right. you know about that? Right. Like what? What's? I'm sorry. What was that? Like, do you know about Amazon? Do you know more about what they do as far as gift wrapping? Like, what's their constraints? They do. They. I mean, they offer. You know, is this a gift? And then they wrap it, and it's very generic wrapping. What I think my um, secret sauce will make you stand out is that I would take the gift either do the wrapping, you know, with your business logo, personalize it so that it comes from your business and it's not just, you know, delivered from Amazon. So it's it's people that want to give it that extra touch, that extra, um, like last year, um, this this company, I did a big order of 300, like, mason jars with their company logo and their, um, like the same colors as their business, like their branding, and they did that as their like marketing client gift for their business associates. So it's it's something that's a little bit more personal than you know a book Definitely. or a vase or fruit or something. Totally. So kind of just going off that, I'm just kind of thinking like if you tried to partner up with a company that does promotional. Um, gifts already so for instance like my uncle he owns a company they do like all pens they do like all sorts of stuff where people can put their logo on it like what what if you try to get in with them and say hey like if you wanted to split do like a rev share and then you would 
get re, like wrap those gifts for them right because like when i for instance when i get stuff that's like branded for my company whether it be like uniforms or whatever it's always just coming in a regular box okay. but if you somehow tried because okay. the, the hard part about this whole thing is is um it's easy to do in a local area the 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 wrapping but like to really get this to scale it, it's it's a okay. challenge because Amazon wraps stuff. Like, you really are, like, the premium gift wrapping service, really. And so okay. so if you can somehow, like, obviously you're way better than Amazon. I've gotten Amazon's wrap before. And like you said, it's generic and things like that. So okay. Okay. I, I, think, I think I'm saying things you already know, really. But I think there's ways to try okay. to make an alliance with a company that is already making promotional material, already has, like... Uh-huh. distribution because that's really what what your challenge is is like the whole mailing aspect and all of that like can you somehow well even if there's things like bakeries that send goods around the country or have a subscription service and you become really the packager or like the 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 one that kind of boxes everything up and makes it look nice uh-huh. Uh-huh. but so um creating an alliance with with someone like a partnership with someone i think so because like because- even like my my uncle for instance what? he has he has a promotional company and they do like all sorts of logos for people and send people mugs and like this time of year is huge for them and so mm-hmm. if you can get in with them who do those like multiple millions of dollars for like UPS and these big brands and you kind of dig into their rolodex and the people who they know and like literally for you what what's good about this business is it takes one or two really big uh, employers that have a thousand people mm-hmm. and they're like hey we want you to right. wrap gifts for every single one of our employees on Christmas and then on their birthday for instance and and then but, th- that's a home run for you right right and that's why like I'm not necessarily interested in scaling beyond Long Beach Los Angeles gotcha. area I'm happy if I get a nest like you know we have big companies here in the LA area, Long Beach, that if I have enough companies here, that I'm the one that they go to. Like, oh, okay. you know, the, let's say the city of Long Beach. That's I got you. Of, I'm the person they call. Okay, then, you, then, then, then really discard a lot of what I just said. So let's focus on that. Like, right now, how do you market to those those businesses? Okay, so right now, like I said, I, I, I guess my help, my, where I really need help is in the marketing. Right now, right. It's, I've lived here for five years. I've worked with the city. So I, I'm gosh, popular sounds so dumb to say, but I'm, I'm pretty well connected. I know a lot of people, yeah. our council members, our mayor. Um, so I, it's word of mouth. So mm-hmm. everyone that I've, um, all my clients that I've gotten, you know, a, a law firm, a woman who owns a marketing consultant, they, I know them because I've done business with them or in some capacity I've met them. But I, I want to go beyond that. I want to market people I don't know. And right. I don't even know where to begin, like, the marketing, I think, is really where I, I feel a challenge and I'm a little scared. That's where, like, right. the fear comes in. Like, do I really have something people need or want? Mm. And how do I promote it? And Right. No, you, I, like, I'll, I'll say right off the bat, you have something that people need. And I think what you, since you've told me this bit of information about staying locally and focusing more on the business aspect, I think that's a smarter move, to be honest with you, than trying to compete with someone like Amazon for gift wrapping. Um, so I, I would suggest right. that, like I was just going more that direction. Cause I thought that's more what you wanted to do. Um, however, um, what I'm kind of thinking is if you kind of almost become not just the gift wrapper, but almost like the, like you, you have experience in planning, why not become like the gift planner? And what I mean by that is like, if you go to a company that has 300, yes. empl- you have the, if you go to a company that has uh, 300 employees and the HR department has a task to give everyone a, a gift, like that person, like I know what it's like to be an employer and be thinking like that and like, okay, what do they like? What did the, what do they not like? Like, what if you are the person okay. who, yes, you wrap the gifts, but yes, you also purchase the gifts based upon a budget. Then you also personalize okay. the gifts. And then, like, the HR department, okay. they are literally given a, like, for these companies, they're given a budget for these sort of things, like gifts, um, special occasions, okay. their birthday for their employees. And it's their okay. best interest to spend and make sure that's personalized because they could just buy everyone, say, tickets to the next LA, you know, sports event. But the thing is, you know, maybe half their employees would even enjoy that. So 
And, and right. for a company that has 300 people, they have money to spend on personalizing gifts and making sure that pe- – because they're interested in making sure people feel a part of the company and feel like they're worth something, right? So I think – Right, we- and it's not, just, it's not just their employees. It's also their clients. Mm-hmm. Too. Def- so right, right. I got gotcha. you. Yeah, and, and for th- people like consulting, like even for someone like me, if I was doing a lot more local consulting, I would send everyone that I'm consulting gifts, right? Um, like now I do some uh-huh. stuff. I do some stuff, but I don't do it locally as much to the people who I consult with. Because uh-huh. when it comes to consulting, like uh, like the people, are, they're making p- high profit margins typically. So like in a place like Long Beach, there's got to be consulting companies that have clients uh-huh. and they need, they, uh-huh. they want something personalized. So what your job could be is A, you could go really personalized and be actually like get a list of their employees and go look at their uh, social media, see what they like, see if all they are rage about is dark chocolate, and then that's what you focus on their gift. And, and really, you become like the mm-hmm. the gift planner. And even if you wanted to change your yes. your entire, even the name of your business to something like something around gift planning, like because you already have planning down, like you're a professional planner and, and events and things, so you kind of get that already. But now it's kind of like, okay, I'm gonna take this off of your HR department, and they'll actually start to look at it as almost not only not only are they gonna make their employees feel better, they're gonna start looking at it as, hey, instead of paying our HR people all this t- money and to employ these people to like spend time looking for gifts and buying gifts and wrapping gifts and figuring out what people like. Like, let's just hire someone to do that all for us, especially around Christmas yeah. time when no one wants to work anyways. And, and right. so, so, so like, um, I think that's interesting, you know, gift planning. Cause I know what it's like to be an employer, let alone an HR department who hardly even knows the people they're getting gifts for. Um, and then I know what it's yeah. like to be an employee and get a gift I really could care less about, right? Um, or just like the standard right. gift package of chocolate and, you know, you, you know, like some some plant I don't want, right? Like, so I think if you right. became the right. person where they say, hey, we're going to hire you, we're going to give you $10,000, um, spend $50 on each person, and you get $10 each of on each of that, like, that that's interesting. Yes. And eventually, like my five-year plan or three-year plan, is to have an app that kind of, you know, where you will put like, okay, I'm shopping for my 15-year-old niece. I want to spend $40. Mm-hmm. And if there was a way to connect, you know, once you submit all that information, that I can go onto her social media website. So yes. be like, okay, she's into this, she's into that. That's and then I awesome. And back with two or three suggestions. And that, that is scalable. And, and, and Catherine, that's scalable outside, outside of Long Beach. To have a service where, because even for me now, like you got like nephews, nieces, you got cousins. Like I don't even have the time to think about like what they all want and what they would like, right? But I do want to show that I care and that I'm not the idiot who buys everyone the exact same thing. So I would love right. to have I a service. I want to be that person you hire to, yep. to do that for you so that you look good. Right. I think that, like you said, that's a five-year you know, goal. I think right now you you have it down. You know what to do, and that's to focus on your local area. And I think a way to do yeah. that as far as you know, you talked about marketing, a way you could do that really – like we're kind of late because we're already past Christmas. But even if you tried to, you could mar- you could market it too for just birthdays because they're gonna have all of their because because what's more cool to be an employee and all of a sudden you show up to work and you have a, a really nice present on your your desk, right? Um, or even if it shows up yeah. at your house. And so you could pitch to HR departments. I think that's really your target market is the head of HR yeah. at some of these companies, whether it be consulting companies. Um, or like, or even just you know, Fortune 500 companies or whatever. Um, mm-hmm. That's really your target market. And so, what you could do is one, you could like on Facebook, literally, you can target people so heavily. You could honestly go after people who work in HR and market to them in Long Beach, and so that everyone in that's HR in, in Long Beach will know your name, and they you will become mm-hmm. synonymous. So that when they think in their department, like, oh, we have a week till Christmas and we need all these presents and we're toast, like, then they'll think of you. So you could literally on Facebook right. target. So this is option one, target HR, people working in HR. So you in employers, you can search by employers or by career industry. And so I would search HR 
and then I would search your demographic, okay. which would be Long Beach or like the surrounding areas. Uh-huh. And th- so that's one er- uh-huh. one area. I I would imagine there's probably I, love it. I would imagine there's probably four to five hundred people that you'd be targeting. So it's not like you're gonna have a massive amount of volume. You're probably gonna be playing paying a couple dollars per click. However, if they continually see that, that's that's a marketing strategy. That's number one. The other way you could do it. I like that. Yeah, the other way you could do it though too is honestly make them a gift. You know, show them what they're going to give their employees by going onto their social media, figuring out what they like, and then it doesn't have to be huge, it doesn't have to be like a $200 gift. But even if it's something small, but it shows you the power of your service that you personalize things. Like I think really like mm-hmm. the way you've talked about it and like you are the personalized gift planner that's what you really are right like mm-hmm. and that's where you kind of i think we want to go like yeah and so um so like you literally go do that to them say hey like this is what i'm doing for you but you can do this for all of your 350 employees on their birthday and on christmas and then you'll yeah. show them like because like if right now if someone just gave me like a box of chocolates like i get stuff from the podcast listeners all the time right like I enjoy that, but like when I know I know someone's listened to a long time, when they send me something that like I talk about one time and I said I like really liked it, or I mentioned an app that I like, or like a type of food that I like, and people pay attention, yeah, like that's like yeah. that means way more to me, right? And I'll usually respond back you're to those people. Speaking my language, right? Yeah, you're totally speaking about that. At Christmas, I love doing the same thing, like something that someone mentioned back in May that they would love to try, and totally. boom, they get it. In yeah. And I think your, I think yeah, I think your service is the person who digs back in their social media to find the one thing that they said, "I wish I had this back in June," and now you're gonna get it for them in, at Christmas because you saw that. And the HR department doesn't have yeah. the time of day to go do that, uh, and but the, yet right. they want the effect of that, which is cus- like employee loyalty and people who are excited to come to work and feel part of a team. And so I think if you do that for right. the head of HR. And like you, it doesn't have to be big. Like I said, it's all about a lot of it has to do with thought, but then also like, Hey, I put time into this. I know what you like. Like if they're a fan of say, uh, the LA Rams, for instance, like a football team, like Mm -hmm. it just takes you to know that for, to get like a signed football from one of the, like one of their players. And, and then that's their gift and they can recognize like, Hey, this is personalized. I enjoy this. It's going to be something they probably frame and put in their office. And so I think yeah. if, if you literally did that to some of like your top 10, like I, if I were you, I would like write down the top 10 people that you want to go after, like whether it be, whether you're kind of targeting a hundred to 200 range employee companies, um, or 300 to 500 employees, like companies. And so, and then go after those eight head of HR. Like I, if you, I don't know what your marketing budget's like, but if you had the resources, I'd do the Facebook thing and then mm-hmm. compile that and just knock them out with an in-person visit with a, a gift and say hey this is what i do in the in the gift you could have a little thing about saying even promoting saying hey like i can do this for all of your employees or whatever like i i think you're smart enough to figure yeah. that part out but um I, I figure that out yeah yeah, yeah. So that's kind of my two cents. Like, I think I think you have something valuable. Don't like think it's just because wrapping it's nothing. I think what you can do though is kind of use the gift wrapping as your platform, but then really become a service because like your product is is the gift wrapping and the gifts. But I think your service is where you'll make your yeah. money, and that's in creating right. personalized gifts. I. Thank you. I completely agree. That's what I want to be known for. That's what I want to focus on. Yeah, yeah. The gift wrapping is is like a conduit for it, but I really want to be like a gift planner. I like. Yeah, I like that. That is. I feel like what I want to market. There's so many services I offer, but I, I don't have the right terminology that makes sense to people. That's like, oh, she can plan all our gifts for us, and we, you know, it's one less thing we have to worry about. Uh, so that's really good advice. And I honestly, really, honestly, I, I just the title, the title you give yourself, like I wouldn't call yourself a gift wrapper. If you want to go into these companies, I would literally call yourself like personalized gifting service or like personalized gifting, like, like you want to become the service. Like I'd focus on that. And I think you got that. Like you, you know, you hear that and I think that's good. Yeah. Yeah. So, well, is there anything else so I can, much. no, I, is there anything else though? Like I, anything else? Oh gosh, I don't know. <laughs> I, I, would, I could pick your brain for hours. Oh, um, yeah, that's so good. I, you know, I do want to grow my social media following. 
because it is mm-hmm. local and I do want to work in my community, that's important to me. I got you. And, you know, I, I've taken a phone photography class on how to, because I know it's a lot of it, you know, about photos and stuff like that. So mm-hmm. growing my social media is a big deal. And, you know, I, I've gotten 100 followers in one month and that was big. But then I look around and people have 10,000 followers right. and 100,000 followers. So I, I want to try to move, scale that up for right. a bit. Okay, let, let me get let big city in LA. Right, for sure. Let That's me let, let me give you the fine print before and then I'll give you a strategy that I think would work. Um the fine print is that in an industry like yours where you're right now you're not trying to scale, I wouldn't worry too much about trying to get social media followers because a lot of the social okay. media following and like even targeting or whatever, you're going to like or hashtags, you're going to get people outside of your area like that you're trying to focus on right now. Um, obviously, yes, you could try to go after followers in Long Beach, but I think just the nature of your business is word of mouth. And I know that's not like the Mm -hmm. coolest thing. I know it's cool to have lots of followers, but like if you look at, for instance, my landscaping business and the trucking company, I think we literally have like 60 or 70 followers on Facebook. Um, but Mm -hmm. it's because that's not what drives sales for us. Like if you were selling an online product. For instance, like our, my, like the landscape course that I sell or my book, like that's when I start to worry about social mm-hmm. f- social shares and likes and all of that stuff, um, because I'm trying to go after mm-hmm. a bigger market. I'm not just joining, trying to go after my local demographic. So that's that's kind of the fine print. Mm-hmm. Um, and then what I would no. say as far fi- as far as like a strategy and like okay, like yes, I want to do this around the world or around the U.S. at least, and I want to scale this. Or even if you just want to stay local but you want to grow your social media, this is what I would say. I would say, okay, so if you're the personalized gift planner, um, why not just brag about it? And what I mean by that is when you, someone gets a gift and they say thank you, but you've already had the, you should take a picture of that gift. And then when they get it and they receive it and they, they're so happy, tag them and send it to them. And, and or I mean post it and tag them in it because you already have their whether it be Instagram or you have their Facebook or whatever they're using because you've tried you know you've looked at right. what they do and then and then post that with their and it's, the reason you'd want to do that is because then ev- all their friends are gonna see because you've tagged them um, they're gonna see your right. service attached to it and then that person who got the gift is gonna comment and say something along the lines of, so amazing to get something I finally liked or something so personalized or I can't believe someone finally got this thing that I've always wanted. Um, and okay. then, so that's, that's, that's virality and that's, that's organic reach because the people, because like you talked about word of mouth, the people who are gonna see that picture uh-huh. are their friends. And so it's not going to be like the, uh-huh. the type of picture that gets a thousand likes or a thousand shares. It's going to be the one that gets 20 and 30 and it's their friends or their business associates who could come back to you for more business. And so uh-huh. Uh-huh. Um, like honestly, I think it's because gifting – like you are in the coolest business by the way, Catherine, because no one – none of your customers are ever angry. <laughs> They're getting gifts. No, so- <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> so – so like I it's thought, I thought it through. <laughs> it's a win win. Like for you, you're giving gifts. For them, they're getting gifts. And so I think the the shareability factor because you've you know done a gift for somebody, even if you're not the one paying for it, if it's the employer even. But the person that's got the gift, they're in the mode of give back. And so it's a perfect time mm-hmm. to hit them up on social media and you know pin them or. Uh, uh, you know, make sure they're included somehow in your social media so that then they go out and s- start to become your uh, your evangelist, you could say, or share it with other people. Right. Yeah, and I've heard you give this advice before. I just didn't think it would be applicable to my show. Like, who do I tag? But I guess you're right. If I already have access for, you know, their social media site, I can tag them. And you're right. That is the way to do it. I didn't think of that. Yeah, well, no, right. yeah. No, well, and I think that's probably even that's so maybe a little bit down the road. Like this is the one thing. The reason yeah. you probably might even I you might not even say it now, but you might be thinking it's kind of like that's almost kind of rude to like my employer gives someone a gift and then you tag them. Um, but I don't. I think people would be fine with it. Like even so, like for instance, if I hired you to personalize gift to my employees, I'm just trying to think this through in my head as I say it. And so okay. then then they get the gift, they're happy. Okay, you already have a picture of the gift. 
um, and you already have their social media. So then what you would do is okay. you would tag them. Oh, you know what you could do? I'm just trying to think this through. I, this is what I don't want to happen as I'm thinking about this. Is the employer to feel like weird that you're contacting somehow their employee? Um, right. And taking credit. Gotcha. Right. Totally. Well, or two, yeah. what you could do is, um, I'm just thinking, even if you just did what I just talked about with the, with the posting, if you did that for the people that you were buying gifts for, like the HR people, if you did that, okay. oh, that's because guess who's going to see that post? It's going to be the other HR people. You know what I'm saying? Right. Um, yeah, I do. And so, and they're, and they're going to be fine with sharing it because they got the gift from you. And they're going to feel obligated almost to share that or to like put it on their wall or whatever. So I think that, right, yeah, right. I think that's probably a better strategy than just doing it to people who have, you're kind of the service end. But the, for when you're reaching out to mm-hmm. people, you could literally, mm-hmm. you know, say this is New York Jets football for so-and-so because, or Jersey, because they like New York Jets and, you know, pin them or uh, put their hashtag or at sign or whatever, their Twitter or whatever, their handle. And yeah, yeah. they're going to share that. They're going to like it at least because they just got something free from you that someone finally took time to care about what they wanted. Yeah. Yeah. No, no, no. That makes perfect sense. Yeah. Yeah. I did, I, cause I wasn't sure how to apply that, that cause I've heard you give that um, advice before, you know, like have to, you know, tie people and then their friends see it and that friend. Yeah. But that, that's a better approach. I think to hit up the HR people and talk to them. Yeah. Um, give them something and then tag them. That's a that the the model that you outlined in the in the second half of our talk was ten times better than the one before, which I was thinking more was like you were the service of gift wrapping, which is a low profit margin, super competitive, yeah. and not a whole lot of brand equity. But I think what you be what right. you've outlined more is you are the service of personalization and taking a, a big burden off of HR for times of the year that they want to express themselves to their employees, and that's valuable, like big yeah. time and scalable. Yes, the service, the service part of it, absolutely. Yeah. Um, thank you so much. I, I like. I'm sure that I have a million other questions, but I don't want to hog up your time. <laughs> I. I really I was excited I'm like I, my candy called me and I missed this song <laughs> I am such a big fan I told, I, I've written to you before and I've told you that I just happened to come across it when I was thinking about okay I'm going to come into my busy season and I looked for a podcast and you came up and I've listened to every episode religiously I'm a big fan oh big, well, big thank fan. you I appreciate it I'm honored to have you on yes. the sh- and listening and I thank you appreciate that Thank you. Well, I will listen to your next episode. Now, are you going to talk about this call, or is it just um, I might, about all the calls you did? I'm, I've, well, I've recorded a couple, and then I think our team will kind of see which one will make it. Like, we, I think we'll probably put one on there. Okay. Would, do, would you mind if we put our yours on there? No, not at all. I, I might. I might do it. Listen. And then yeah, um, like, what you, while I'm recording, just in case they pick yours, because um, I think we recorded three today. Um what is your uh, Instagram, Facebook, website? Like, give a 20-second pitch on your company. Okay. Uh, my company is Tinsel and Bow, and we uh, focus on the art of celebration, gifting, gift wrapping, gift services. And you can find me on uh, Twitter and Instagram at Tinsel Bow. And on Facebook, I have a Facebook page. It's Tinsel and Bow. Awesome. All right, Kathleen. Hey, well, I'll I'll see what I can do. Maybe we'll put you on there. It was good. I I like I liked how we made that turn there as far as what I was thinking your business model was because what you what you have going is, is a lot better than I thought. So yeah. um, it was fun. Thanks. I really appreciate it, and I, I'm glad to hear from another business owner that it is a service that yeah. is viable and that people want and need. And I've seen it happen. Like people just don't know what to do, especially small business owners too. They're like, yeah. what do I do? How much do I spend? Like, and I want to be that person that comes in and saves the day totally you're you got it down like seriously because i've been on both sides the employer who can't figure out what to get people and you want it to mean something and not just be you know the guy who just feels obligated to buy a gift but then i've been on the other side with you the employee and you get something that's generic and it's just it's a lose-lose in that situation right and so i think you have something big time like don't let anyone tell you it's just a gift wrapping service you have you have more you have more behind it Thank you so much. I look forward to hearing more of your episodes and hope to talk to you again. Catherine, you rock. You have a great Christmas. 
You too. We'll see you Happy later. Happy holidays. Bye-bye. Right, bye-bye. There it is. Bring in the heat on Business Boot Camp Podcast. Signing off.